Hey guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today I'm going to be creating a name in Inkscape and then taking that into Easel and then taking it onto my CNC machine to cut it out. So if it sounds like something you might be interested in, stick around and check out the video. So first of all, I'm going to start with typing in the name. So the name today is going to be Peyton and the font that I'm going to be using is Amarillo. So I'll just bring that in and as always, path and object to path just so we can make that a path and that way it can be altered or manipulated so i'll just make that a little bit bigger and i'll pop it into outline mode so you can just see what i'm doing here uh, you'll see that these letters all run into each other uh, if i left it like that then obviously when i put it on the cnc machine to cut it it would actually follow that path and cut into those letters uh, so it's just a matter of going to path and then combined and then path union and you'll see there that all that now joins up it's all one one path i'm not too fussed with the gap between the p and the e as this is actually going to be stuck onto something so uh they don't actually need to touch so that's fine um i'll just uh resize this uh so i want this to be 60 centimeters by 21 centimeters high uh, and as i said it is getting stuck onto something and i'll show you exactly what it's going on to at the end of the video uh so i'll just resize that and then basically i'm just going to go ahead and uh and save that. I'll save that as an SVG. Uh, so I'll just save that up here. Save it under pictures. And I'll just put Peyton. And just also making sure that that's an SVG. And save. So we'll jump from Inkscape here over into Easel. Uh, Easel is a program that I use to run my CNC machine. Um, here's what it looks like. Basically, first thing you'll notice is in the top right corner here, it's blue. The carve button is blue. It's uh, because I'm not currently connected to my machine. Uh, when you're connected to your machine, that's usually green. Uh, so this is just a material. So I've got MDF selected and I've got my bed size, so the size of my machine selected. Uh, also, the size of the bit that I'm going to be using, which is a 3.2. It's actually a 3.175 millimeter bit, but... Uh, 3.2 is fine and then you can manually set your your depth so i've got mine set at seven mil because i'm going to be cutting through six mil mdf and 500 millimeters uh, a minute as far as the speed goes or the feed rate um seems to work pretty good at that uh as i said i cut through one pass six mil mdf and i always set uh sort of one mil deeper just to make sure that it does cut through uh so we'll import that file by clicking on the import button we'll go through and find that patent and i'll just bring that in so as you can see there, that white square that you can see in the background is the size of my actual CNC bed. So wherever I place uh, whatever it is that I'm cutting on, on that is exactly where it will cut from relative to my machine. Um, so basically I'm going to go down and select cut outside of path. If I just zoom in on the preview here, uh, you can see there that it's going to actually go around there now and cut on the outside of that path. And you can see now why I needed it to all be joined as well, like all joined um so yeah basically yeah go through and set up your tab so the tabs are the little little pieces that you set in there uh so that when the machine goes around and cuts it out uh it doesn't actually just drop out and it's not able to move around while it's machine's actually still cutting um so you can go through and you can set them up to sort of whatever your size you want i tend to do four millimeters long and two millimeters high uh and depending on what you're cutting is how many tabs you use but i, I sort of you know around eight or ten and then you can just simply grab on those and pull them to where you want to see them. You can see the little yellow tabs there. So basically wherever I put them is where the tab will be um, when it cuts it out. And it's always good to see to put your tabs on, on, I guess, straight parts. It's easier to cut out at the end. Um, but again, you can place them wherever you like. So I'll just go through and place the rest of these where I want them. Uh, just to keep everything nice and still as it's cutting out. And again, down in the bottom left corner there, you can see the zero, zero mark. So that's where my router will start. And so the, whatever you're cutting is relative to that point. So I'll go ahead and move this down a little bit and get it into place. Once I've finished setting these tabs. Just bring it down there there is one more thing i'm actually going to do with this and i'm going to flip this or mirror it now normally i don't do this but at this particular point i am doing it as i've purchased some 
uh, spiral upcut bits and they tend to uh, leave a really nice finish on the on the bottom but not so much on the top so just while I'm using these bits I ordered them incorrectly um, but didn't want to waste them so I'm actually flipping everything that I'm doing at the moment uh, normally I wouldn't do this but uh, for this part I am and like I said it's just because I purchased the wrong bit but I don't want to waste them so I will go through with the video and show you in a bit more detail on on uh, why I've actually flipped that over I was just going to show you those bits that I was talking about earlier on. So these are the ones here. So these are the spiral bits. They're a spiral upcut. And basically what they do is that when the when it's running through the material, it's pulling the material upwards. So it actually leaves a really nice clean cut on the bottom and not so not so much of a clean cut on the top. So I was actually meant to purchase the downward spiral ones, ones that push the material down downwards as it cuts. Um, and I accidentally purchased these. So I didn't want to waste them because they're about 30 or $40 for the pack. Uh, so that's the reason why I've been flipping those designs over at the moment. Um, I used to, well not used to, I still do use, but uh, these are the uh, two flute straight cut bits. So this is, this is what I mainly use. Um, but I read somewhere that these spiral bits um, were a little bit quieter to run and they actually are these these ones are actually quite noisy um it's not a huge difference but uh that's what i normally use i, I normally always use a two two flute straight cut um, but at the moment i am using these spiral up cut ones uh i have ordered some down cut ones now that are on the way but i definitely don't want to waste these so uh that's the reason basically for flipping that flipping that design over in easel and cutting so that it gives a really nice cut on what turns out to be the front of the name uh, rather than the back but uh, you'll see that in the up and coming video that I'm about to do when I run the machine and um, you'll be able to see the difference in what I'm talking about. Cheers. Alright guys so here we are at the machine now. I've got my 6mm MDF screwed down to my wasteboard and I'll just basically go ahead and start this. So that zero zero point that I was saying before that's where I get it to now. I do have a Z probe um to set it but i find it's just quicker and easier with things like this to just manually set it and like i said i do set it um to cut a mill deeper um so yeah i'll go ahead get this set up and i'll run the job and come back at the end and show you how it turns out Alright guys, so you would have noticed uh, while that was cutting how rough this top side looks. It's a little bit furry. Uh, I'll just go ahead and move this out of the way. I'll get this unscrewed and flip it over so you can have a look. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, as that was cutting through, you would have noticed it was a bit furry. And that's what I was talking about, about the upcut bit. So it pulls the material up. So the underside of this will actually be pretty nice. So as you can see there. I'll just cut these tabs out. So these tabs are the little tabs that I put in earlier on in the video. Um, but as you can see, the front of this thing looks really nice. And the backside, not so nice. Um, and obviously, with a down spiral bit, uh, you get a really nice clean cut on the top. So they were the ones that I was originally uh, trying to order. So yeah, as you can see there, pretty, pretty nice, pretty clean. 
and then again a bit fuzzy on the back so a bit of sandpaper will knock that right off and you won't even be able to tell but anyway guys thanks for checking out the video and uh if you found it helpful give it a like and again consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos thanks guys